Hi, my name is Dan Lucart, and welcome to part four of our Keenan study. Um, this part is going to be dedicated to showing how I take what I do with the video analysis and start to implement it in both my game and my students' game. So there's essentially three phases that I like to do, and phase number one is going to be playing with um, kind of the moves um, that, that I see Keenan do. And what I like to do is I like to, to work with my kids just before or after class and just kind of pull them aside and show them, hey, look at this cool new technique. And uh, in this case, it's just kind of how to retain guard and um, against a leg drag and inverting. Just kind of some general principles. I'm not trying to teach any specific move or anything. Um, and I'm not saying this grip goes here, this grip goes like this. I'm just kind of saying, hey, make the shit, make the, make the grips, keep your legs in tight, and just kind of showing them a little extra. And this serves a couple of purposes. Um, one is I think it improves the relationship that I have with the kids when I just kind of pull them aside and show them the cool new move that I'm working on. Um, and second it is it helps me kind of clarify the techniques. You know, I just say, for example, here I just tell him invert. And he does what he can, and if he can't do it, I'll pull him into the position and everything. So it kind of helps me understand what's difficult about the technique, what's easy, and it helps me to start to assemble the system. Because um, what I don't have at this point, at least when I'm filming here, this was the first day after um, I started training again, after I did the parts one and three, I was injured um, on my rib in a tournament. So I didn't really get a chance to train it until th this day here. And everything that w I filmed is on the course of that Monday. So um, another reason that, that it's kind of cool to, to, you know, just kind of play in the style of Keenan is that kids' inhibitions are, are completely lowered. They're not uh, confined by some of the rules and everything that adults are. That they just have fun. And this was kind of a cool thing that one of my students improvised. I told him to, to invert. Um, I showed him a video of Keenan inverting and everything. And he did a uh, reverse uh, double ankle sweep on me. He just kind of improvised this right here where he just grabbed my, my, uh, my ankles and then pushed me over with his feet, which was pretty cool. Um, here I'm just kind of teaching the same sequence with a, another student and I'm just trying to improve upon what I showed the last student. You know, this is before class or after, uh, I think it was uh, after class actually. Um, just kind of showing some of the same ideas. Um, some of the things that I saw with Keenan, you know, keeping the legs in tight and everything. And it's always helping me to clarify again. And I was kind of showing them the shin to shin, both the last student and this one the shin to shin variation in the triangle and everything, which is something that you saw saw Keenan do quite a bit. So once I play around with it a little bit, um, the next phase is for me in clarifying the whole thing is teaching. And the first thing that I like to do is I like to teach the kids competition class that I have at my gym, which is fairly small. It's just kids that, that uh, frequent regularly and they love uh, seeing new techniques. So. Here's kind of a, a brief montage of Keenan doing um, the cross grip de la Hiva, um, where he shoots to the deep de la Hiva and swings around for the barambolo. This technique, where he swings around, um, this was something that I see here from Purple Belt, and that he did, you know, from purple, brown, and black at, at a very high level, and it seemed to be a very comfortable technique for him. Here is a, a brown belt version of this technique where he's uh, shooting against Morris Ayala, who he, we analyzed as a black belt in his black belt debut. So that's kind of interesting that somebody that he had competed against. So a very similar sequence where he goes to the Baron Bolo with the cross grip de la Hiva. Now, at this point on the Monday that I started, I didn't really understand why and I had this in my analysis as well, why he was choosing one guard over the other. That's since changed. Um, I noticed that he goes to the cross grip de la Hiva when his opponent is posturing upwards. If you rewind, um, he, he, and you'll see that the opponent tends to be standing every time he goes to this cross grip de la Hiva right here. He's working the Leandro sweep or the Leandro grips, 
and the pollen was too postured and that seems to be one of the triggers for that position but it's not exclusive you don't have to be posturing it's one of the ones that he's very comfortable with and when he needs to really go we see in this next clip that's coming up when he needs to really really push the pace he'll still go to it regardless and completing the baron bolo here so right here this is one where he needed points you can see him attacking it with a a little bit more ferocity there and he didn't even have uh, the cross grip for as long and his opponent opponent attacking the toe hold so these were all things that we saw uh, of him and it's kind of nice to see them edited together so what I do is I take the same videos, it's hard to see up here, but this was the first one, the one where Keenan was at Purple Belt, um, where he swung around and took the back. I thought that was the coolest one. And I didn't quite understand what was making uh, Keenan swivel around. I know you can't see it because I can barely see it right there, that step. I didn't quite understand it this time. And teaching helped me understand because as I was teaching it to the kids, I realized that with the cross grip, I have to pull backwards to help them kind of swing around like Keenan did. Let's see if I can go back and show that one again. Let me scoot back. This part right here, where he swings around, that's what they were looking at on the screen. Let's take a one more time at that. And that mystery of why it was so easy for him to swing around in that manner, that mystery helped me really start to kind of crack the code of the various ranges of his guard. And what I discovered when I was teaching it to the kids is I really had to pull aggressively, like I was saying, with my cross grip. And then they just flew right around um, into that barren bolo. And I kind of had, ah, oh. so, and then I went back and watched tape on Keenan, you know, more or less those, those clips. And I saw that he was doing it every time that they were really super posturing out of his spider guard. And he'd switch to the cross grip de la Hiva and go right away and attacking that. Actually, let's go back and explore that concept. This is something that I kind of wanted to save to, for the last conclusion, but I guess I kind of let the cat out of the bag there. Which is, um, I think I understand when he goes for each one of these guards, unlike the, the previous ones. So look how his opponent is, is posturing up quite a bit here. And that seems to be the trigger for when he goes to, again here. You see how his opponent is standing um, quite extensively in the guard and going for that cross grip de la Hiva. Because I think if he, in, he's kind of going down and up, but right here he goes up and then Keenan shoots to the deep de la Hiva. Um, I think if he was down a little bit more, he would uh, go for the Leandro sweeps. And then if he was down even more, he'd go for Shin to Shin and Spider sweeps. Um, so that was something that I explored um, through rolling and through teaching. So let's go back here. So just showing the kids. And kind of cool thing about video analysis, in including in the classes, is that kids do a much better job with the video analysis portion. They are very, very monkey see, monkey do. I could just show them the technique, even though I, I drilled with them, I showed it, I demonstrated it, everything. But you can just show the kids the technique and they'll try it um, and get pretty darn close to it, which is pretty amazing. So here we have the kids starting to specific train. We drilled um, that specific cross grip, uh, De La Hiva Baron Below for, for about 20 minutes. And then, um, working here the specific training so the opponent on top he's trying to 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 step over the leg he tries there to shoot to the deep de la Hiva, but he didn't quite get it so afterwards i i troubleshooted with him on that portion of it and he shoots to the deep de la Hiva and gets the the baron below scrambles to the back so you can see this is just after a small amount. You know, a lot of people think that kids shouldn't be learning this stuff. And, well, for starters, if they don't learn this stuff, they're going to be fish out of water when they're competing. Um, I'm in Southern California next to the Mendez Academy, and they're very, very De La Hiva, Baron Bolo, Tomonage, uh, leg drag, that type of uh, uh, jiu-jitsu. And it would be uh, an error on my part if I didn't prepare my kids who were 
you know, desired to compete, even though they're white belts, you can see they're, they're doing just fine. That's because they're kids. They're sponges. They learn better than, than all of us adults. And you can see here, more specific training. This time it's a different student on bottom. Kind of shoots to that. A little, little trouble inverting, but it's okay. And then working to the back with the, with the Baron Bolo. So once I'm kind of done with the kids, then I move on to the adults. But I start with the simpler techniques with the adults. And here is uh, one of the techniques is impossible to see because of the, the exposure on the video here. But it's uh, Keenan versus Majid, and it's that scissor sp uh, spider scissor sweep, where it's the foot on the bicep. And you can kind of maybe see it. It's a little bit bigger right there, the sweep. So I'm just explaining this to the, the 7 a.m. class, I think, um, at this time. So we just drilled that a whole bunch. And, I, and again, even though everything... Um, everything this far, I didn't really understand like the ranges in which he goes for the different techniques, and I'm still kind of figuring it out. Um, we're just kind of starting with moves, but just because you don't have some moves of Keenan doesn't mean that you think like Keenan, which is what I'm trying to do. So here's another common sequence that I taught him, which is the shin to shin with double sleeve control, and then going into um, that sweep, because that was something that I noticed. Um, that, that he did was a lot of that shin to shin work was to uh, set up a triangle or you know they get so paranoid about the shin to shin that they put their legs in, in a weird configuration and you're able to do that sweep and uh, here um, the tomonage the holeta sweep I called it the uh, over the top sweep was an important part so we just had that whole sequence drilled a whole bunch with my students here in the evening class Kind of a similar idea, uh, a failed uh, holeta sweep into a scissor sweep. Now, this was one that I learned a lot through teaching, is that you certainly can do this sweep when they're postured up like the opponent was. But as I began to roll in the style, I realized that it was really the closer range that uh, was a little bit better for that sweep. Even though it's a good, good option, it's just not something that I saw from Keenan as much. So the third phase is, in the evening class, uh, rolling. And there was a number of things that I wanted to work on that I saw in the video. Um, I was actually most interested uh, with this, this day um, in his passing. There was a couple things that I had in mind. Is one, I really wanted to work that knee slice with the thumb in grip and cranking open um, the neck because it's something that I wasn't as familiar with. I wanted to also work on stepping over the leg and posting on a shoulder like we saw in Gianni Grippo. I wanted to work some of the, um, the, the X guard and deep half guard counters that he used with the hand and the collar and active posting. Um, and then guard wise, I wanted to work that scissor sweep, the, the Leandro stuff, um, some of the sit up guard stuff, essentially everything I saw from the guard. I wanted to incorporate and not do me, but I wanted to do Keenan because that's the only way that you can begin to understand um, you know, kind of how he thinks in each situation. So one thing that I found really interesting and I kind of alluded to was in Johnny versus Keenan here, even though it didn't really amount to anything, is this hand position while he, when he stepped over the leg. And I commented, you know, it's, it seems obvious why you do that, why you adjust that higher to push down the shoulder. And even though it didn't work that first time, he was able to step over the leg again and still keep the hand on the shoulder. And then we went into a reverse De La Hiva situation, which I found really interesting. Um, and throughout the analysis, parts one through three, I noticed that stepping over the leg was quite often followed by a knee slice pass. He was either a long step or knee slice, with a knee slice being a very predominant part of the passing. And notice the hand kind of on the shoulder, it went a little bit higher here. But this gripping sequence where I put the thumb and uh, forefinger in grip, which I realized throughout the week, was an easier grip to make at first, because it's kind of like you have, you have four hooks to kind of catch the grip as opposed to just one. It just seems a lot easier to get it. And once you kind of uh, get it in, you can adjust in with both hands the forefinger and grip, and then work to strip the grip. This particular sequence was one that was burned in my mind. I don't even think he passed the guard here, but you can conceivably um, see stripping the grip off the um, 
off the leg and then working the knee slice pass. Here's a different sequence. This is not the same match. It's just the same tournament where you're cranking, cranking, active posting, driving your weight forward. And, uh, and then here he went to the quarter guard and long stepped. These were a couple sequences that I really, really wanted to explore. And let's take a look here. So here with a blue belt, um, he tries to sit up guard and I uh, put the hand in the collar. Now something that's compounding the issue, well there I make my thumb and grip, something that's compounding the issue is the shin to shin. You know, my opponent has a shin to shin here, which can work to disbalance me. And it keeps me kind of higher than I'd like. And then peeling the grip. All these are out of order. So I, I filmed um, I filmed four, four rolls. So all this is edited from four rolls. And I'm driving my weight forward and cranking his face and then freeing my leg into the knee slice position. Again, a similar idea. Look how I put the hand up on the shoulder. This is something that, that's new to me. And then working to make the forefingering grip first. Kind of similar sequence making the thumb in grip, driving my weight forward and the knee slicing. I was kind of more interested at this point in just the knee slice and then doing maybe a long step here or there or driving in the quarter guard than long stepping because I wanted to get the base version of the pass down and kind of work out some of the issues that were involved in that. This one's kind of hard to see but it's a similar uh, similar circumstance to the first one it's the same same guy is that he's working a shin to shin here and I'm able to just really just drive my uh, open up my forearm into his neck enough to where it just doesn't matter and put my weight over him again the hand on the collar here here he tries a lasso so I circle my hand and then do a long step which is something I wanted to hit here and there to just kind of experience that a little bit because that long step here, I'm trying to, the long step from the knee slice, I think it's a little bit premature, uh, the, the long step in that situation, which is something that I thought about later that night about how I did that, and it didn't quite feel right. So I have to make sure my position is good. So I went back to the knee slice. Here I just have the forefingering grip, which is what you have to do when it's all, all that you can make if you don't feel like you can adjust the grip inward and just passing with the pressure on the neck. So the long step was something that we saw Keenan do um, quite a bit, or at least try quite a bit. And here against Gianni, this was just after the clip I showed previously where he stepped over. And Gianni's kind of trying to spin underneath him. And what Keenan does is he tries to lace the legs. It was something I was trying to do with the previous one. Um, when I went back to the knee slice, but here he has a little bit better control of the leg with his bicep so and uh, Kind of on his toes Almost on the knee and then dropping the knee and then going to the knee slice and burying his head That's something that I wanted to try a little bit So Here I'm with a blue belt. He was a uh, very spunky in this role <laughs> Posting on the shoulder And I go underneath in, in kind of a similar manner here. And here, unlike the other one, I was able to get a better control of his ankle, uh, grabbing his butt, so the knee is down a little bit more. And I was able to do a similar sequence um, that Keenan was able to achieve. So here, stepping over, same way. My arm was higher than I normally do, but it wasn't as quite as high. Again, the same underhooking and long step. That was the same opponent that it didn't work against before. Same partner, I should say, not an opponent. Now, one thing that was really interesting to me was his counters to being in X guard. Because I noticed that it's essentially kind of plays on a similar base which is the hand in the collar here, and then active posting with the hand, and then seeing if you could come up. Now this particular match we didn't analyze, but I watched on my own after, um, uh, after part three, I think it was, or just during the whole process, and uh, didn't make it on the analysis videos, but it was something that stuck in my mind, which was that hand in the collar, which we saw in the analysis. But this specific sequence where he's able to stand up, I thought for sure that Keenan would be swept from here with the, hand, uh, the leg up. This is against Morris Ayala again. 
But he did something kind of cool, which was um, go show his back and put his hands down to free his leg up on top. And I've actually seen this before, but it just didn't resonate with me. A lot of times when I just get in that position, I'll just let the guy sweep me and just concede the sweep just for the sake of training. And I think in competition I would be swept as well. Um, I think I saw in uh, uh, Homo Bahau versus Lovato, not any of the recent ones. It was in some local gymnasium. It's on YouTube. I think uh, Homo was working X Guard a bunch, and Lovato did similar things. But it just didn't resonate with me until I saw this match here because Keenan's able to kind of scramble away. He's not intentionally going out of bounds, but he ends up just going out of bounds as he's trying to base and stop the sweep. So I have the hand and the collar here and posting out with my hand in a similar way. I'm kind of trying to lean back a little bit so he's enticed to come up and see if I can work that double hand on the ground uh, counter. I'm just posting with my hand again. He comes up and then I get to work. Kind of a similar circumstance. So I feel my experience points uh, were gained just by doing, being able to replicate that one sequence. So here we're in kind of like a single leg X guard position and he does the same thing that previous one was a little bit more defensive. Um, this one's a little bit more offensive. What is he looking for? He's looking to more or less undo the legs and kind of get in a knee slice position or, as I referenced before, atomic butt drop into the, into the mount. So right there he tries to sweep and he uses his hand to stop it. He tries to sit into the mount and then turn it into a knee slice. Kind of like, it's not even a knee slice because you're not, your hand, your leg isn't caught in between, but uh, you're able to kind of go over there. Just one second, gotta get this phone call. Um, with a blue belt opponent, and I make the same grip, the hand and the collar, and I try and posture up and shuck it over into the mounted position. Now my initial attempt worked, but I would have liked to try that really kind of awkward knee slice position. Like what I was saying before, it's not really a knee slice because your leg isn't in between their legs. But you're trying to knee slice like knee on belly over to get out of that awkward position. Now this one here was the Leandro Low Sweep that we saw Keenan do a bunch. And I put together a little montage of some of the clips that we studied with that Leandro Low Sweep and coming on top. Which is again the, the hand grabbing uh, the cusp of the pants, foot on the bicep with the spider control, scooting underneath the guy and getting the sweep. So here, I do the same type of situation, making the grip down here. Circle my leg in between the middle, or at least try to. And my opponent is based so far backwards that I don't really need to do the double ankle sweep and I just come on top with the leg control. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sweep using Keenan's sweeps because the sweeps are really, and the guard is a really important part of Keenan's game. So I'm really trying to sweep and come on top in the knee slice position. And you can see here, I have to be a little bit stronger with the, the cross face here because this he's rolling a little bit more aggressively and he's a more experienced blue belt. So you can see how my elbow is really cranking across the face. I'm driving the weight across and it seems to just take the life out of the guys. You can kind of see his facial expression there. <laughs> yeah, right there. Not, not fun. I'm trying to pick up his arm a little bit, but it's not too concerning. I tried right there to move into the quarter guard to replicate that sequence that we saw where Keenan's knee slicing goes into the quarter guard long stepping right there. I'm trying again, but the energy is just not there. I'm just trying to force it, and I'm not really past his leg. And then going back into the knee slice here with a forefinger and grip. And I just end up, I think, uh, picking up his arm and kicking free because his arm was in the way of my knee and then just uh, getting the knee slice past there. Here more, more on the Leandro sweep is making the grip here from the spider guard position. And notice how the range, I'm kind of starting to put it together at this point that the range of my opponent is kind of like he's standing, yes, but he's not standing up tall like we were talking about in the in the uh, uh, the cross grip daily Hiva Baron Bolo. 
So that seems to be the range in which this sweep in Keenan's system excels, kind of this mid-range, let's call it the mid-range uh, portion of it, scooting underneath him and doing the Leandro sweep. Here I'm trying to just undo the position and maybe get into a knee slice, but it didn't work. So one of the common themes was the spider scissor sweep, where you kind of bring your legs over this way. And here is against Majid. Majid has this, uh, he's very close range. And we were talking about the ranges. Uh, Majid is very close here. And Keenan's working a little bit of the shin on shin position, which is kind of making him hesitant to put his legs up. So if both of his legs are on the ground. He tries to pull for a triangle there. And then working this uh, sweep right here, which he gets him uh, over and completing. Here's a variation on that where we're working um, uh, with the hand and the collar. Either you can't make the grip or you prefer this because you can pull him forward a little bit more because it's a stronger grip to pull him forward than just on the sleeve. So Keenan decides to abandon that because it's hard to do shin on shin when his opponent's legs are in this configuration. He gets the double sleeve control and immediately goes for the sweep. Now something I didn't notice uh, when I was rolling today, I've really increased the power of my sweep by, by realizing that Keenan's leg is bent from this position. And then you explode it outward because the, the bent leg allows you to push into the bicep and create hip rotation at, at a faster spin. And then it's kind of like a push away. And that kind of underlies uh, again, we see the, that similar counter um, with the X guard position. That that underlies a theme and where I was wrong with Keenan. I thought that Keenan, the core to his guard, like the what is the defining feature that makes Keenan's guard Keenan's guard? And in the gi, I thought that was the ability to go inverted. But I was completely wrong in this regard, I think. It's just a shift of perception. It's not necessarily right or wrong, I guess. But I've since changed that to something that's, I think, more obvious to Keenan, but less obvious to people that, you know, that are not Keenan, essentially. Which is, I think, that the linking factor of Esgard is uh, legs and close to your chest. Um, inverting is just a another aspect of his guard but it's not the core identifying factor and that's something that i'm going to explore the most in part five is um showing both the ranges of keenan's guard in in the bjj scout tribute the ranges of his guard which is close medium long um and then showing how the guard retention skills anchored by feet in close is important. There what we saw was a shin to shin into a triangle and I felt that that was important to include in this part because the shin to shin triangle often sets up that scissor sweep here is working shin to shin, grabbing the collar, pulling forward, going for the triangle but often they get scared of that triangle and you're able to go on over to that spider scissor sweep. So here back to the the frisky blue belt opponent I, I pull the same grips that I saw Keenan working with. This was the one sequence I was kind of teaching the kids. I'm working for shin to shin, but he knows that because I've just taught him that. So I'm trying, I haven't really got the idea of keeping my feet in close to my chest, but you can see that, it's, that many of the aspects are there. I'm starting to put it together at this point, but not be able to articulate it. I'm working for that shin to shin. You can see he does not want me to get that shin to shin. So I make the grip just like the same sequence that we saw Keenan do um, against Majin, I think it was. Uh, making the grip, I strip the grip first, it looks like, and then doing the sweep. Notice how my leg is bent and not straight when I go for it. It helps with the rotation. And then getting on top here. And that was where I did the, the single leg uh, atomic butt flop counter with the hand and the collar. A little bit more. He's kind of scared to engage the guard. And I just do, do just that like half-hearted one there. And then back to the knee slice again. Uh, with getting that pressure in with the, with the thumb in grip. It looks like based on the angle of my shoulder. And really cranking there. You can see how this really just kind of breaks their will. Look, it's just all nonchalant passing. So here, I guess a new opponent. I don't think we've seen anything from this one here. Same. 
on the uh, spider guard scissor sweep, where he was in that close range, very close to me. Now, something that I noticed about Keenan was trying that Holeta sweep. It didn't work there, but it's a big part of his closed guard game, working the double sleeve grip and trying to take his opponent up top there against Mateo from Marcelos. And we saw him do this uh, on a lower plane against uh, Majid from the closed guard. And in part, that was because Majid was trying to do his, uh, his choke, his uh, baseball bat choke on Keenan from the closed guard. So here... I'm thinking that I want to work a double sleeve. This isn't my uh, preferred um, method of working the close guard. It's not my primary attack, so it's kind of a new way to attack the close guard. I'm pulling him overhead, and he's able to base. So as he returns, I shoot the triangle and use the, the control of both sleeves to, to get it there. Now this sequence, this was one of the ones I found really fascinating that we observed, which was... Um, making the grip on the sleeve and controlling the ankle here and using a forward disbalance motion same as the tomonage and then as as he's able to kind of recover you work the ankle lock in there that was one that really stuck out in my mind because unlike some of the other ones like the leander one i've seen before i really wanted to work that one so here i'm controlling and thinking about doing that i try and disbalance forward but it's really difficult because I'm kind of trying to force it. My opponent's knee is turning into my chest, um, making it a little bit difficult. So I did try this. I'm trying to get him not to turn the knee, maybe by working other things, but it didn't quite work out for, for that sequence. So I wasn't able to get that sequence. But here, eventually, he's going to try and posture all the way up, and I have the double sleeve control. It's ideal not to let him go to complete posture like this, but I'm able to break his posture with my weight and then go into the, the whole that sweep there, the tomonage. One of the more interesting ones as well was the ankle lock here where he wraps up the ankle, um, he puts the hook in and then uses his leg to disbalance this way. He chops the leg down and working the ankle lock. Um, we, we analyzed this and kind of looked at Kyle Terra and everything. Um, Kyle Terra and Edwin Najmi. Here I'm trying the forward disbalance motion, the Tomonage. I'm trying to do a similar motion um, that I was trying uh, earlier with a different, different uh, training partner. But um, again, not quite getting the, the energy that I want. So I'm just trying to open up the guard, making him step backwards with his leg a little bit and maybe entering the butterfly hook and just kind of forcing the the position a little bit it's not probably the best option from here but it doesn't matter because that's not how you get good at new sequences you kind of got to force them i disbalance using my left leg make the uh the kind of rear naked choke grabbing wrist with wrist grips and then uh, arching back and getting the tap with the ankle lock this sequence um was one where he did collar and sleeve de la Hiva, and he's pulling aggressively. And his opponent gives too much backward energy, so Keenan puts his hand on the ground, scoops his leg, judo chops. And this is where he went into the knee slice that we saw before. Uh, we, I linked it earlier in the lesson, which was the th uh, thumb and grip, cranking, and then uh, moving into the quarter guard here, and then still cranking, getting a hand underneath, and then long stepping out. I really wanted to try and replicate that sequence exactly. Um, I was able to get close here with a collar and sleeve. And I pull right here, and he gives me backwards energy. He's from combat base, so maybe Keenan would probably try and do the sweep, the, the spider scissor sweep. But here, I put my hand on the ground and then chop my leg underneath, and then try and go immediately into the knee slice. Because I remember commenting in the analysis how you're kind of susceptible to getting your back taken, but there's kind of a special type of uh, you know, pressure, a special type of feeling to not get your back taken with this sweep, and they kind of, uh, or with this pass, and they kind of uh, work well with one another. Here, uh, Keenan is able to lock his guard around his opponent's legs, using his long legs, and then pulling forward. It's better to have control of the call, uh, the sleeve and the collar, but what he's doing, using is using both collars to pull down, get under base, and then pull out the arm. So Keenan has long legs, I have long legs too, 
at least for, for my for my weight class. And I'm noticing here, even though it's a different situation, but the opponent brings his legs too close together right here, and I just lock my legs around him, using kind of my shin to break his knee, or my calf to break his knees, and then taking the sweep in a very similar manner. The, the spider lapel guard is one that I couldn't really work too much because it involves inverting a lot to all the way around into the knee bar sweep or the lapel plata. But this sequence that we looked at where he has the spider lapel control and he's working to invert the other way, he swings back around and does the Baron Bolo here on Jackson Souza, which is what got him essentially the win in this match. Inverting and doing the Baron Bolo. So you just have essentially um, get him to overcompensate on one side and switch to another. Here against uh, Mateo, it looks like, from Marcelo's. He's trying to spin around, but he's not giving him much leg access with that one. So going all the way around into the barrel below from that particular grip. That was a pretty interesting sequence. So I was, I wanted to do it one time. It's not so good for the rib when you have a popped rib to do it. But here switching the grips and working, trying to work a barrel below. I wasn't able to shoot it in, and I just backwards roll on top. Kind of in the similar vein as that other, uh, the second one we saw Keenan do where it didn't quite turn out to be a clean Baron Bolo, and then trying to go into the knee slice right away. So here, same thing, getting the knee slice, and passing. Now, just kind of some odds and ends. Keenan's known for this 50-50 arm lock, where he slides in with a two-on-one grip and getting the arm lock. Obviously, that match being a, a very good, uh, good match to watch there. So my opponent tries to, to step over my leg, and I get the 50-50 guard position. This balance him the two-on-one, and working into that arm lock right away. But I wasn't able to get the arm lock, but what I was able to do as I was attacking the arm lock is free my right leg position as I was swiveling around, and I just control the leg and the arm, and then free myself from the 50-50 and pass the guard. So, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed um, the parts up until now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do further detailed research um, for um, all of Keenan's matches, analyze them in, in painstaking detail, and hopefully um, by Christmas time, it's uh, 2013, it's December right now, early December, and hopefully by Christmas time I'll get a BJJ Scout tribute of um, Keenan's entire game. Um, and kind of uh, look at some of the gypsy magic, which keeps his uh, guard retained, um, which is pretty cool. So until then, I hope you enjoy. This is uh, Dan Lucard from Brave Jiu-Jitsu. Thank you, guys.